Okay, so what what should we uh, what should we type in? All right, how about uh, a jar of peanut butter, arm wrestling a tub of yogurt? <laughs> Can't you try it? <laughs> you think you'll actually get something? We're about decent? to find out. Wow, this is some interesting. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's do um, a mouse in shining armor riding a unicorn into the sunset, but in the style of a child's crayon drawing. There you go, that's a beautiful specificity. <laughs> okay, hey, uh, I'm Andrew Chang, welcome to About That. Joining me, of course, uh, Josh O'Kane, tech writer with The Globe and Mail. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks for having me back. No, hey, uh, our pleasure, and so, you're here today because, I mean, this week we're doing sort of a, you know, like it's like a special week-long series uh, casting forward to the, you know, the year sprawled out ahead of us, 2023, but taking like a very specific slice of life yeah. uh, to talk about. And, and today it's artificial intelligence. You bet. Like it's here, right? It's in a, here. In a very real way. And it's in the past year, the ways that the average person can access AI and to actually sort of see the tangible results of prompting you with information yeah. and getting, you know, really interesting results, that's here now. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's been proprietary and inside companies for a while, but there have been a lot of really interesting products that come out over the past year that are going to both have a real implication as to how we think about technology over the yes. next few years yes. and open up some pretty thorny debates. No kidding. Yes, and and so the curtain's just been pulled wide yeah. open. And and so today on the program, there are kind of three main areas that we're going to try to get to get through as far as AI is concerned. So, AI and and the intersection point between it and people, like regular everyday yep. people, and the way that we can use it on a daily basis. Um, also, like how AI can fundamentally transform business and industry, mm -hmm. and just that landscape completely changing. Correct. And then, as you alluded to all of the reasons why we need to be a little bit cautious mm -hmm. with AI, because we're also, I mean, we see it solving a lot of problems, but also creating a lot of problems. Yeah, when you disrupt an industry, when you disrupt creativity, there yeah. are going to be people who are, are left behind. And when you make assumptions with any technology, as AI does, then you're also gonna enter some pretty thorny ground. So so let's start, I mean, maybe on, on the lighter side here with these images sure. that we've created. <laughs> so so we, we gave it some pretty difficult prompts. We tried. Right? Like yeah. what was remind me what was one okay. of yours here? So I've got a pop art rendering of the CN Tower, but the sky is orange. Right. And then so the one the one that you chose that was pretty good mm -hmm. was actually pretty good. Yeah. Right. Like it's kind of it's kind of impressive. And I mean, I had here a mouse in shining, shining armor riding a unicorn into the sunset, but in the style of a child's crayon drawing. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, that's, that's... That's pretty good. That looks like a child kind of drawing. Like it's, like, it's kind of impressive, right? It like is. Like how far the technology has come. Yeah. And this has all been happening behind the scenes for, for a number of years. But OpenAI, which is this sort of uh, San Francisco or Silicon Valley rather based uh, AI organization that used to be not for profit, that model has shifted, is trying to put these products out there so that people can see sort of how mature AI technology has been in generating interesting sort of creative text or images um, and allowing people to just explore and experiment in interesting ways. Now, we have a little game to try okay. to test and see how convincing the AI art actually is when compared to human art. Do you want to come over here? All right, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Okay, so, um, so we have 12 pieces of art here. Okay. And uh, this is a game that our producers have prepared. In each row, there is one piece of art that was actually human created. Mm -hmm. The rest are AI attempts okay. at it. And so in each row, there's one correct answer for which is the human piece. Okay. We have to guess which one that is, to see how, how convincing the AI art actually is. Do you want to take a stab at the, right. the skeleton? I really should have studied art history. Um, <laughs> yeah, do you recognize any of these? I don't know. I don't recognize any okay. of Okay, all right. Um, I am going to say for the skeletons, Yeah. I'm going to go with this one. It's human-made. Oh, see? I was going to go with the fourth one. Okay. okay, so go ahead and pull the second one down, see all what right. you got. It'll tell us on the back whether we got it correct. I was wrong. You were wrong? AI. AI. Wow. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So we're doing really well so far. Yeah, so uh, okay, quick second stab. I'll go with this one. Okay, let's I was gonna say that one. You're so. gonna say that? AI. Wow, okay. We are uh Okay. 
Forget it. Uh, Next so round. that was the real one. Okay, okay, what do you think? You know what? I'm going to go for this one as human. Human? All right. I think, you know what? I'm going to go with this one. Okay, let's try it. Ready? AI. AI. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, one last shot at this. Okay, I, I'll go with this one. <sighs> okay, yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Okay. Oh my God, we're crying out loud. We're really bad at this. Or AI is really good at this. All right. Lots to talk about. <sighs> Dear okay. Lord. Okay. Um, human, human, human. I am going with this one. Okay. This one. Okay. AI. AI. You got to be joking. All right. Uh, this, is, this is actually blowing this my is, mind. I can't believe we're this bad at it I or know. that AI is that convincing. I'm a little bit stressed. You pick. And I'm just going to close luck. my eyes and hope. Uh, AI again. AI. I'm done. Really? Be real. <sighs> real. Real. Okay. So okay. we just uh, we, we are we are not getting into a grad school program for our history. <laughs> Let's go back to the desk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't have any art friends. <laughs> just look I'm gonna have that. to answer to some people after like, this airs. But that's actually unbelievable. So I mean, like mathematically, the odds of that happening just by pure chance were really low. No. But no. it. Like, does it tell us something about how convincing AI actually is? It does. It's, you know, we have these sort of machine learning models, these AI models that are training themselves of all of the art that's available yeah. on the open internet and studying it and learning about sort of context and design and digesting all of that information so that when you type in keywords, it's able to sort of take those keywords and also be able to parse the sentences that you're doing because it's also digesting text, right? Yeah. And so it's sort of, it, as a result, it's taking this interesting sort of human understanding. Um, so if you're trying to get something in the style of an artist, it's able to accurately replicate that in a really fascinating way. And, and you bring up words because, yes. like, so the same the same company that's behind the, the art generation that we've mm. been playing with, uh, has also kind of unveiled this chatbot called yeah. ChatGPT, mm -hmm. and and I've, I've kind of heard it described as a calculator, but for but for text, yeah. for words, and it's amazing how mm -hmm. intelligent it seems. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your experience been with this? And so, I've got it open right here. Yeah, I mean, like ChatGPT has been in develop for, development for a, a little while now. It's sort of now available to the public, and that's why the public is freaking out and trying to prompt it with increasingly complex, or in some cases. Com you know, increasingly absurd prompts. Um, and it's, you know, it's a way, it's really interesting what you can get if you were to type in, like, the other day. As an example, I typed in, you know, why is uh, the east coast of Canada not as economically dominant as the east coast of the United States? Wow. I'm a maritimer. That's a big and, question. Yeah, and so, you know, it prompted out, you know, some really interesting facts saying, you know, that there's major population increases uh, in the United States over the last several hundred years that has made it economically dominant, as an example. It did not, however, get to the actual reasoning of it, which is that the, the people who you know, colonialized and settled Canada uh, went down the St. Lawrence River more, more often than they were actually sort of going to the, the maritime areas. And so as a result, there was sort of a greater population boom there. It didn't get that, right. but it did get a bunch of facts around that. And yeah. it's, it's, it's approximating a smart answer uh, by digging up the facts and presenting them in an almost eerie order right. um and and I've, I've heard it described as sort of misleadingly impressive yes in that way because yeah. what it creates for you is actually quite impressive yeah. but almost like a parlor trick in, mm -hmm. the, in a way right like just while you were talking i typed in this prompt here so i said write me an advertisement for math tutoring services but make it funny and with lots of puns yeah. That would be difficult for Google to try to synthesize, Correct. right, and to create something. Mm -hmm. But here, so it's thinking about this request, and we'll, we'll see what it gets. Here it is. Are you struggling with math? Do you find yourself saying, I can't even count on one hand how many times I've failed this test? Well, fear not. Our math tutoring services are here to save the day, or at least your grades. With our team of highly qualified math experts, we'll help you conquer even the toughest equations and make math a piece of cake or pie, if you prefer. Like, okay, this, wow. this is AI's attempt at humor, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's kind of succeeding. Like, and, and it sort of makes me wonder, like, business-wise, yeah. industry-wise, yeah. this feels like a game changer, no? It, it can, because if you are, you know, taking these models and you are digesting 
in a lot of these cases, basically all of the information on the open internet. So everyone who's ever uploaded a math tutoring flyer with enough keywords for the AI model to sort of grab that and study it and be able to regurgitate a version of it that interprets it, um, you can imagine that also happening for business. So if you were going to give something a bunch of prompts and you wanted sort of your business to be more efficient, one great example would be, why not get AI to write code? And so sure. if you're looking at, you know, I am running an organization with 20,000 people churning out a large amount of software, and you want the base code, that grunt work that people might not necessarily enjoy doing, wow. um, yeah. you know, you could, and there are some organizations that are doing this, developing, you know, AI models that will generate code. You prompt it for what you're looking for. How, now, but how, how sophisticated is that code, though? Because there's a reason that people do it and, and not machines. Correct. Do it, right? yeah, and what you want to do is obviously have a human eye go through it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's easier to, uh, you know, go through and sort of parse something and be able to say, okay, like, we can fix this. You don't want, you know, an AI written by uh, code to perhaps, you know, land a plane for you. Uh, you're going to make sure, you're going to want to make sure that all the instructions that you're sort of coding into this uh, workout, you know, are, are fundamentally up to human standards. But it's getting there because AI trains itself on what exists, and as it trains itself, it gets smarter. What What are the other, not just other applications, but implications of this? Because when you when you mention bots that can write code, mm -hmm. I mean, that might make a whole range of entry-level positions at a tech company redundant. Correct. But but th I'm thinking of other industries. Like, like, how else do you see this snowballing? I mean, you could look at a range of creative industries. Copywriting, as an example, really basic. Like, that just wrote a flyer for you. Now, imagine you right. work for a marketing agency, and you are, you know, being contracted to write a bunch of sort of short advertisements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not just get it to do the creative work for you. But what does that do? Like if you're an entry level person who wants to get a job in advertising, suddenly the bots are doing the job for you. How do you climb that climb that ladder if you're a creative person? And it can be it can be hard. And there are a lot of really thorny issues going forward about what this is going to do for the for the labor market for a lot of creative work. So, so there are there are limitless sort of applications of mm -hmm. AI as they relate to real people and as they relate to businesses that, that we could brainstorm right now. Like, yeah. like we haven't even talked about self-driving cars, you know, mm -hmm. as an example of yeah. that. But we're gonna take a commercial break. And on the other side, we're gonna start talking about where things really, really get thorny um, mm -hmm. with AI, some of the pushback against it. August 29th, 1997, Skynet woke up and decided all humanity was a threat to its existence. Hey, welcome back to About That. We are here with Joshua Kane, tech writer with The Globe and Mail, to talk about artificial intelligence and where we see that whole thing uh, landing in 2023. And, and can we talk a little bit about the, the pushback? So, you know, mm. like the problems and the pitfalls that, like, that we don't just imagine, mm -hmm. but that are real. Because, mm -hmm. you know, set aside the whole, like, Skynet is, you know, creating Terminators and eradicating the human race okay. stuff of AI. Put that behind us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or ahead of us. Um, <laughs> what's, what are the problems that you see? So when you are training AI, when like these, these, you know, the software is scouring the web for information that it can train itself on. So it understands what to generate for you when you're putting in a prompt. And so because of that, um, it is training itself on a lot of material that a lot of people have put a lot of time yeah. into generating. A lot of that this is the work of people's jobs. They're artists or they're creatives. They're creative copywriters, as we were talking about earlier. Right. And what this means is that for the sake of labor, is it going to devalue the labor that all of these people do? If you took 20 hours to paint a beautiful picture or generate something perhaps that wound up in an advertisement, yeah. um, you know, some, some really interesting piece of art um, that is then scanned by this AI model. Um, and then it is just then used to, when someone says, I want to see my face on a really interesting uh, background, and then it generates that, it's not necess It's what it's doing is taking something that someone took so much time and effort to put together, and they're just making a free product out of it, and manipulating it right. in such a way that it's no longer their product. And so, so it, 
Yeah, that's the that's the crazy part, right? Yeah. Because if it was just a direct lift, if yeah. it was just direct theft, I mean, there mm -hmm. are copyright laws Correct. that would protect people from that. But, but when something's in the style right. of a, a work of art, it is no longer necessarily, under Canadian copyright law, uh, something that you could have any rights against, or sorry, rights for. Because I could just type into any of these yeah. sort of AI bots, yeah. create me a painting, but in the style of Josh O'Kane's mm -hmm. prolific artwork. No one wants to see that, but go on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but if I created that, yes. then and it does a pretty good job, yeah, I could see how that, that makes your work and, mm -hmm. and the years that you've spent developing your craft mm -hmm. um, feel a little less unique. So this, and this has implications just for anyone who works in a creative field. You know, as we were talking about earlier, if you are a copywriter and for an ad agency, um, and suddenly you're trying to climb the ranks, but the junior job is filled by an AI bot, and then some manager position is just fixing the grammar errors and then popping it into an advertisement, how are you supposed to a like just do your job or B, climb through the ranks of an organization. It's gonna fundamentally change even like the idea of managing human resources in a certain degree. But then there's other implications too. Let's, let's talk about music. So, so I was talking to a composer the other day and we were talking about what could possibly um, be automated uh, with music. Every streaming service, okay, at the end of 2022, a bunch of people I know started posting their most listened to artists yep. from the year, right? All that data is available. What is most popular? Now, what is what costs streaming service the most? Royalties. Right. The, the, the fees that they are paying the creators and the rights holders of all of this music. What if you didn't have to pay anyone? Hmm. What if they found the most popular uh, of genres and sort of styles and create trained AI models to replicate those, put them on popular playlists, suddenly their cost of doing business goes down and musicians uh, are going to be left in the lurch. Yeah. This is a, this is a real thing that is very like this is a business model that is ripe for the picking, and we may see this coming up. The whole industry just upended. That yeah. Way. L let me let me raise another problem here that I've encountered personally. Sure. So like, have you heard of these magic avatar things where they you you, you upload a bunch of your own sort of mm -hmm. you know, selfies yeah. to, a, to an AI site? It compiles them, tries to learn from them, and then it generates images, mm -hmm. right? So let me show you this. So, okay. so these are some images that it generated of me. Um, I sent it a whole bunch of photos. Mm -hmm. Does that look like me? That does not look like you does, at all. You know, like, does that look like no, me? That is a whole other person. And, and like, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, I don't know if this AI thinks all Chinese people look alike mm -hmm. or, or that I just can't tell the difference yet. Like, yeah. like the, the, the racial bias that, mm -hmm. that is baked into this thing to me seems obvious, but th this is just my own small anecdotal experience. So AI is a reflection of the data that it digests, or the, the, the image is generated by AI as a reflection of the data that it digests. And frankly, so much of the data that is on the open web, on the open web is a lot of it is generated by like white people, white men right. in a lot of ways. And so the systemic problems that have always existed in society are being reinforced by a lot of AI models because the data that it's being trained on has the systemic problems baked into it. Therefore, the product is going to you know, reflect that as well. There are a lot of AI ethicists who are trying so hard to make this better, um, but it is still a, a, a pretty consistent problem with a, a lot of different AI products. I also think about it, sort of issues of self-image mm -hmm. because some of the photos, so here, here are some mm -hmm. of the other photos that it created. Mm -hmm. Sort of like me in these very kind of, when it got my face right, like mm -hmm. in these kind of stalwart, stoic, mm -hmm. heroic poses. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, I, I swear it's sort of making my face like slenderer yeah. in mm -hmm. a way. And you know, like I'm just generally a cooler person when I think about this AI Andrew Chang. Well, what, what images do people upload to the internet, the they upload the, right? the best versions of themselves. Yeah. Photoshop versions for themselves. Right. Facetuned, right. I believe, is word that is often used for that. Yeah. And so, as a result, the the ideal images that are being used for these AI models to train are based on these really interesting dynamics in human psychology, where the way that we want to present ourselves to the world is reflected in that. 
Um, and as a result, it is going to adjust the way that you look towards the way that society um, has already reflected itself. And when we think about the kind of, kinds of unrealistic expectations that mm -hmm. people place on themselves and mm -hmm. on their images, and especially, I mean, I have two young kids, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of a, a universe that I think a lot about, mm -hmm. how they see themselves and how they see other people projected in the media that they consume. Boy, if this forms any significant chunk of that, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think. There are a lot of questions. There's just anything you can think of is going to spark an enormous debate about how AI works and how AI is generated and what it results. And it, we're, there's just going to be so many ethical debates. And there's going to be a whole, I think, a, an, a complete rethinking of what is media literacy because we're going to have to think about how we think about all this information that's being presented to us and how the next generation is going to think about how all this information is presented to us and what is real and what is reflective of reality or reflective of these very strange dynamics in human nature. Hey, welcome back. We've been talking about AI uh, this entire program. And I guess, Josh, like for, for me, I see it as simply like a, a preview of progress, right? Mm -hmm. The part that scares me is when I think about how much I rely on machines to be absolutely correct, mm -hmm. like what, like a calculator. Mm -hmm. I never question the results of a calculator. Mm -hmm. And it frightens me that I might get to a point where I trust AI to that extent when I really shouldn't. I mean, for all of at least the last, say, 200 years, humanity has relied on tools to help us progress. Um, it's never been you know, perfect. Like the Industrial Revolution, a lot of people were injured and killed. Um, we're looking at the idea of introducing the idea of progress in a way that is going to benefit a lot of society, but it, we're also looking at a lot of really thorny debates about who gets left behind over all of this, over the uh, ways that AIs work and train themselves on images that creators, as an example, yeah. um, have put together. The visual artists have spent hours and hours refining their style and then putting out a finished product. We need to think about how we value that as a society. And there's going to be a lot of really hard debates coming up about all of this. Yeah. But it is also going to make life easier for a lot of people. Sure. And that yeah. is where that's I true. think, you know, the, the next few years of debate of, over AI, I think that's going to be a really, you know, important series of dialogues. We will see if this is a power that can be harnessed. Uh, Josh O'Kane with the Globe and Mail. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Andrew. That's it for us. Thanks for joining us on the program.